Okay, so um, in this video I'll be going over Pop Quiz 3.0. Um, if you have um, suggestions or if you have ones wrong on this one, you can go ahead and correct your errors. What I ask is that except for uh, sentence number one and um, sentence number three, you don't copy my answer. So you can copy sentence one and three, but you can't copy sentence two, uh, four, and five. Um, so anyway. Uh, here's the quiz. The number one says identify the partner's job using a predicate nominative, underline the linking verb and the predicate nominative. Uh, there really is only one answer uh, for this. Um, here, here is um, the answer that I have for number one. Uh, the partner is, this is our linking verb. Is is a linking verb because I can replace it with an equal sign. I can say the partner equals an official of the church. Uh, an official of the church this is a predicate nominative, but you don't want to get all of these words. You only want to get the word official. The word official is the noun, so official is the predicate nominative. The second sentence, the question was, what do the stories about death from the serving boy and tavern keeper tell you about death in the Middle Ages? And you have to use a subordinate clause that begins with the word because in your response. So here is the sentence I have. Now you can't copy my sentence. You'll have to write it some other way. Um, so don't copy this one, but here's a correct one. Death in the Middle Ages must have been common. This right here is called an independent clause. It can stand alone by its own. I was going to say IND for independent. Because is what starts our subordinate clause. Um, uh, because characters... Uh, mention deaths from uh, murder and violence. This is our subordinate clause. And it's a subordinate clause because it has uh, not only this subordinate or because, but it has a, its own subject. Both characters mention deaths. So this is a subordinate clause. So this is what it would look like. So you'll have to write your own uh, if you missed that one. Three, uh, you have to identify all the parts of sentence in your response. So I strategically answered this question by writing a very short sentence. And if you want, you can copy mine. Um, this one, there's only one answer, so you can copy my sentence. Here's the sentence I wrote. The rioters, subject, meet, verb, death. This is the direct object. So there are only three parts of sentence here. One subject, one verb, and one direct object. Uh, in question four, uh, what does the partner offer to do after he tells the story? How do the others respond? You have to have a compound complex sentence. This means that you're either going to have a semicolon or you're going to have a coordinating conjunction after a comma. And the coordinating conjunctions form an acronym, FANBOYS, which stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Uh, and we have to underline and classify. Classify means that we have to say whether or not the subordinate clause is a noun clause, an adjective clause, or an adverb clause. Those are our three choices for subordinate clauses. So let's look at my sentence. Now you can't copy this one. You have to come up with your own. All right. The partner offers to sell pardons. This is our independent clause. Because this is because this is compound sentence, we need to have two independent clauses. So this is one independent clause. Here's another one. His audience refuses angrily. This is another independent clause. They are combined with this coordinating conjunction, but. This is a fanboys. Here is our subordinating conjunction. This is the part of the sentence that uh, makes it a complex sentence. We have two independent clauses. Here is our complex part. This is an adverb clause. It's an adverb clause because after tells us when he offered. So it answers one of the adverbial questions and it describes the verb offers. It tells us when he offers after he finishes telling the story. So the answer here is to underline this part of the clause in circle but. All right, uh, question five. Five says, what is, ironic about the what is ironic about the attitude that the old man has toward death? And we have to use a participial phrase. Now, all participial phrases begin with a word that ends in D or 
ing, unless it's irregular, which is very rare. So we're, we're looking for a phrase that starts with D or ing that helps to describe a uh, person, place, or thing. Here we go. The old man, here's our subject of the sentence, and then here's our answer. This is what we're going to underline, described by Chaucer. This is our participial phrase. Described ends in D or ing. Described by Chaucer, it's all an adjective that describes the old man. And uh, if you look at it, you can actually kind of remove it from the sentence, and the sentence works out okay. Anyway, the old man has, and here is our noun, an ironic outlook, or the word outlook, which is our direct object, toward death. Uh, and then, be, okay, so because most people fear death, he wishes for it. This is also a compound complex sentence because I have a semicolon, and here is our um, subordinate clause. So in answering it, I answered five like I would uh, sentence four. So anyway, that is that. So here are the questions one more time. If you want to revise your answers, you can go ahead and, um, and uh, pause it now and work on yours. And if you want to see uh, an example sentence for each one, uh, here's this. Please uh, don't copy all of them. You, if you want, you can copy my answer for number one and number three. The rest I'd like you to write on your own, so make sure you don't have the exact same sentence that I did. Good luck.